Yeah, we do. You're doing a workout today, Terry? Yes, my core. We're going to get that in okay. tune. And you have a book, a, a book you're going to be talking yeah, about. Yeah, we're traveling the world with Allison, Allison's Adventures. Of course, it, it's coming up soon. And we thought it would be fun to start off the show with today's Hot Topics. Now, a little bit different, though, because we're doing it with our significant others as the guests. Now, who thought that was going to be a I good idea? I don't know. I mean, I thought it was a good idea, but I did have to bribe my husband to do it. Yeah, well, relationships are hard, and all this togetherness <laughs> during this pandemic can be tough, Brooke. Yeah, so we just actually just wanted to hear what our spouses really think of us. Again, not probably always the smartest question, but we invited the lovely Heather Holloman and the super foxy, my man, Michael Fox. It's been good. I mean, Brooke, Brooke's schedule is, has, hasn't changed much, and so the, uh, you know, our world is is actually very similar she gets home and being a professional talker like I, I like I refer to her she just keeps talking and talking and talking but yeah we you know we've been managing things kind of the same I work from home and and uh, she gets home and um, we're definitely benefiting from a lot more family time which uh, has been has been great it's tiresome um, but it's been great oh look at that was so sweet I didn't even have to pay him for that <laughs> we're just getting started Oh, okay. Okay. I see where it is. What about you, Heather? How has it affected your relationship with Terry? Um, I think it's just been really good for, for us and for like our whole family, just like, like Michael was saying, like a lot more family time. I mean, we were always on the go, like never had, I mean, we would just see each other in passing. Like you got that kid for practice. I'll take this one, you know, and then weekends we were gone at tournaments and stuff and our life, that was our normal. And to have it like this, like we've all just kind of started to kind of reconnect and, and it just feels really good. And it's neat to see like some new hobbies form for him too, like the gardening and everything. And I think Heather, you let everybody in on one of my secrets though. You told everybody uh -huh. about my garden. That's been my release. And I think, you know, and I've never grown anything before in my life. And this year I grew corn and tomatoes and peas and carrots and all kinds of stuff. So that's been kind of my escape. So have either one of you guys had to find some place to escape, some way to get away? Well, Michael, you have a new hobby. Puzzles? <laughs> <laughs> no, yoga. You've been doing yoga for oh, your first I time been ever. Doing, I Is have it? been doing yoga. I, my, my flexibility is, is awful. And I was once told in sixth grade that I needed to... It was going to be my downfall physically, and I finally come around 25 years later, or even more. And so, yeah, I have picked up yoga. I mean, he does it secretly in the basement, though. He won't even let me see. <laughs> it's Heather is a half. She's taken up a hobby. In our backyard, we have wild ducks that gather. And Heather, you want to tell them about your wild ducks? Oh, thanks, Ter. <laughs> um, I we have a pond back there, and we just have had like little ducklings and stuff, and. They just, you know, we've been wanting a dog for so long and um, that I'm trying to like transform these ducklings into being my little pets. And so um, we just call them and they come to us and I talk to them and he makes fun of me and calls me the crazy duck lady. And, but yeah, that's one Dr. of my hobbies. Doolittle. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> so really yeah, cute. Like, talking to the flowers and stuff. I'm like, oh, let's kind of do that. <laughs> but that's fun. a very cost effective pet too. I know that there's a story uh, oh, about yeah. a guy that has a bone to pick, though. Yeah, he's Midwest, not happy. Got a link in Nebraska. And I'm, I, Brooke, I, I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, this guy, he's very upset. And he, his name is Ander Christensen. And he spoke really passionately at, at a recent city council meeting in Lincoln. Um, because I, he says that there's an improper use of a term in restaurants and bars across the world. And he's ready to bring an end to that. I'm talking about boneless chicken wings. <laughs> Yes. That's his mission, man. And he is all about it. He says that Lincoln should be the social leader in the country when it comes to this. And that, quote, we've been living a lie for far too long. And we know it because we feel it in our bones. Wow. He couldn't resist. He couldn't. He couldn't resist. And he says, which I didn't know this, that chicken wings aren't actually chicken wings. They're like nuggets. Boneless chicken wings are just chicken tenders, which are already boneless. You you didn't know that until now? No, not oh, the listen, boneless no. chicken wings. I thought boneless chicken wings were like the chicken wings that they just pull the bones out of them. I'm, I'm, I'm on, board, on board with this. There's no such thing as a boneless chicken wing, which, you know, your wife Heather may know since she's really into poultry lately. I mean, you may be on board for this. I don't know. I'm not the cook with this stuff. <laughs> 
like, Michael, do you eat chicken wings? Our kids. Like so, our kids are, they, they know that as boneless chicken wings. They're going to mess them all up. I, I kind of have a bad rap in our family. I, I just love meat or boneless meat. And I have a hard time eating, eating uh, meat off the bone. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not a chicken wing connoisseur by any stretch. At the end of the day, it's not a chicken wing. It's actually a piece of the chicken breast. So call it what it is. It's a chicken breast. Unless you're going to take the bones out of the wing and serve it, it's a chicken strip. We can call them buffalo style chicken tenders. We can call them wet tenders. We can call them saucy nugs. You changed my life. I'll tell you that. I learned something today. <laughs> when it comes to the pandemic, they do say that Washington State is the best state to live in um, in terms of what would you say? Pandemic Everything. safety? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, actually, Brooke, to tell you the truth, so this is what happened. Uh, it's the best place to live, according to Oxford America. A report that just was, came out and says that we have earned a score of 76.41, which ranked the number one of all the states. Alabama ranked last with 17.76, and we were high on the list because we have uh, a moratorium on evictions, a moratorium mm -hmm. on utilities being shut off, expanded telehealth services, as well as Medicaid, and all that kind of good stuff. So, Well, it'd be really hard to move out of Washington State right now, but if you had to, where would you go? We have to stay in the United States, huh? Well, I don't think anyone wants us anywhere else. <laughs> Can't go to Canada. I think. I mean, I'm a Northwest kid. I'd stay. I'd stay in Oregon. I'm mama's boy, so I'd be close to closer to my mom and my family if we went to Oregon or maybe Idaho. I love. I love the beauty of Idaho. Um, and you know, there's some opportunities to get isolated and and uh, have have uh, you know just be away. So those would be my. I would recommend a stay away from my mother-in-law for our own <laughs> preservation, but you know. <laughs> She'll be watching this. Oh, I know she will. She loves me, and I love her very much. I mean, we've been watching the Zac Efron Down to Earth special. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get to, he's been touring around the world to all these cool places and where places where they have sustainable energy and all these cool, cool things. And uh, I want to go to either Costa Rica. Costa Rica looked really cool. I don't remember the Costa Rica one. I thought it was... Um, yeah, you don't remember it because Zach Efron had his shirt off, Heather. That's why Costa you don't Rico. remember I it. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, he looks like a, like a cute, older Zach Efron. Terry, yeah. like, it is Zach Efron. <laughs> I was like, oh, no wonder. Well, now I just got to figure out how to make sure my mother-in-law doesn't see this. Well, hopefully, she, hopefully she doesn't get that channel. Yeah, dang internet, though. Dang internet, <laughs> Terry. It's going to haunt me.